So let's yeah. start with Dynamite. Okay. It opened up with Adam Copeland coming down to the ring for a promo. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, fans, you having fun? I'm having fun, too. There's been a lot of negative BS this week, but screw that. I want to talk about positivity. I want to say one thing. If the one thing that was really telling to me was when he said that, there was no crowd reaction at all. So the basically, I think that they, the, 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 the punk thing, which is obviously what they're referring to, the punk promo, or the punk thing with the El Hawani, um, while it did get a lot of talk in social media, it was not, I don't think it was nearly as big as they as they thought it was because it's one of those things where sometimes when you talk about inside stuff, you know, you'll hear the crowd react and they know exactly what you mean. And this one, it was like they were quiet when he said that. So it was kind of like, okay, you know, it's, there are people who are aware of this, but uh, not that, you know, not, not enough to that anyone reacted to it. So he said, if you're a fan of wrestling, it's a great time to be a fan. I grew up watching WWF, NWA, Stampede, BC All-Star Wrestling, International Wrestling, devoured it all. Nine years, I had this torn away from me when I came back. Realized AW was where I needed to end my career. A lot of people didn't get it, but I saw a bunch of great talent. Osprey, Omega, Hangman, Swerve, Joe, Claudio, Moxie, Darby, FTR, Young Bucks, House of Black, and Malachi Black. All of these first-time ever matches... A lot of friends in wrestling. They say I look like I'm having a blast, and I am. It's been a great 32 years celebrating AEW and the guys who started this place, including the Bucks, Kenny, Cody, who got a big pop, Mm -hmm. and Tony Khan. And he said they're all fans. They all love this. AEW makes pro wrestling better and more fun. And AEW, he says, is where the best wrestle. Mm -hmm. This is quite the speech to open up the show. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, it's funny because um, I had heard about this before I watched it, and a lot of people were really negative to me on it. And when I watched it, it was just kind of like, uh, you know, it wasn't positive. I mean, you know, he's a great talker, and it was fine. I didn't have, like, a major issue past the point that, you know, they they didn't need to address the punk thing because it wasn't that big. But... You know, as far as doing a rah-rah speech on TV, you know, I mean, most of what he said, I mean, it was cool. It's cool to see a guy who basically said he's having the most fun of his career now and bring up all those potential matches and hopefully hopefully, some or many of them actually take place. And, um, you know, but, like, I didn't I didn't find it the thing to be a negative. I mean, there was there I was didn't find anything a- negative about it. I thought it was a good rah-rah speech. I just don't think they needed it. I would agree with just that. Just do your thing. Yeah, I agree. Guys said shitty things, just do your thing. Ignore just, it and just go. Just go in there and, um, I mean, to me, that's the kind of stuff that you address on social media. That's not the stuff you address on your television show. Unless it was, it's so overwhelming that you have to, and there's a reason, um, it wasn't that overwhelming. You know, I mean, so I thought that uh, they didn't need to do it. I don't think it was a negative that they did it. I mean, there was... Well, I think the thing, too, is is, uh, it was an hour and 50 minutes. And, you know, I talked to a lot of people in AEW after that punk thing and WWE. And, you know, most of them were like, I didn't listen to it. I I saw some clips on the internet. I saw, you know, some stuff on Twitter or whatever. But they didn't listen to the entire thing. And those are the actual wrestlers. Those are people that were there and, like, had experiences and whatever. And so, you know, I think I'm sure it got a lot of views on on YouTube or whatever. But as far as like, oh, I'm sure it, it, the, it did. the overall it did. AEW and WWE audience, my guess is a lot of them did not sit and watch the entire hour. And oh, 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 well, CM no, 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 I don't think many people. I mean, you know, yeah, there's there's going to be people who watched it. But I mean, the rank and file wrestling fan did not watch it, but they may have heard certain clips sure. or or read certain things, but certainly not sit through two hours of of that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that it's it, it was it was anything that they needed to address. I mean, the on, on TV at least, um, you know, as far as the only, I, I don't even say it's a surprise because when when it was over, my thought was that I knew, you know, because the, the guys who he went after the hardest, I felt were um, were you know, I mean Tony Khan, who I pretty much knew wasn't going to address it directly. Um, and uh, Jack Perry, who I actually thought might, and Adam Page, who I knew 100% would not. 
So, um, I mean, those were the people who I thought, like, if there's anyone to address, those would be the guys. And I knew Adam Page would not, for sure. Um, and Jack, you know, I mean, he can address it or he cannot. And um, Tony Giovanni, who I didn't expect to say anything, did basically, you know, he didn't deny it. But he just said he didn't care. He didn't want to talk about it. It's the past. And it's just a bunch of bullshit. So that's that was the Tony Schiavone reaction. So then we had the uh, actually two excellent matches back to back: Hobbs and Will Osprey, the Battle of the Wills. Uh, this was a great match. Maybe Hobbs' best match in AEW. It was I Hobbs' mean, best match. Yeah, Osprey thing, sold tons for this guy. Tons. The, the thing that I didn't like about this match is when I'm watching it, and it's just kind of like this random television match. I know Osprey always goes all out, and he always tries to have the great match. Um, and always does, pretty much. But I thought that, you know, for a guy who is got, you know, so much charisma, so much ability, who's 30 years old, I think the key to him is, is yes, having the great matches, but some of those bumps that he took, it's like maybe if this was, you know, the, the match with Brian Danielson, you know, big match like that, you know, or, or a world title match or something, yeah. But in this match, it's it's kind of watching going like say you know look you're gonna have a great match with the guy anyway and he di- he would no matter what but but you know the bumps on the steps you know that one bump on the steps and things like that I thought like you know you don't, you don't. actually I I thought that one and uh, I thought that was nothing because really? he he uh, it was flat back but still it's still well it was step. flat back but it was he uh, he went for a springboard off the barricade. And Hobbs lifted him up for the vertical, and then he walks over, and he kind of fell back. And honestly, Osprey only fell like a foot onto the flat part of the step. So, I mean, there was a lot of other stuff that, uh, you know, especially the finish, which actually was not Osprey getting hurt, but it looked like it was Hobbs, although he got right back up afterwards. Osprey goes up top, and hits a sky twister, and looked like he landed right on Hobbs' head. And he hit the hidden blade, and you could see when he covered. Like, he covered him and also was hugging him and talking to him, I think, to make sure that he was okay. And then Callus got in the ring, and he was going to raise both their hands, but Hobbs throws his hands down. He gets right in Osprey's face and then storms out. So I presume Hobbs is all right. I mean, he didn't sell like he was hurt at all. Yeah. But uh, it looked like he got his head landed on. And then uh, as Will is leaving, Danielson comes out. And Osprey tells him to follow that, and Danielson laughs and goes, I don't know if I can. <laughs> and uh, he went down and faced Lance Archer. And a really uh, good match. You know, the thing about both matches is it was the same deal. It's like the story is that Will Osprey says that he's the best in the world. Brian Danielson wants him to prove it because he thinks he's the best in the world. But then, like, the setup for this is they both go out and go 50-50 with Will Hobbs and Lance Archer. Danielson sold so much for this guy. He just sold, and every time he made a comeback, he gave the guy more. Goes to make his comeback, he gives the guy more. And finally, at the end, he hits a series of kicks, hits the uh, running knee, but Archer just only drops to his knees. Has to hit some more kicks, hits it a second time, pins him. And, I mean, they were both great matches, but I don't know. Kind of think if you're going to have a match between the two guys who think they're the best in the world, like they should be just killing dudes. Lead to that big feud. But hey, good match. I, I don't. I don't think they should have been killing um, Lance Archer and Will Hobbs. Not sort of killing them, but like they could be. They, they, you, you go have, out there and but, but the, the, dominate. They, that's not what they're about. I know. That's, that's I'm bringing that up because that was actually CM Punk's point yesterday, which is it's more important to have great matches. Sometimes it's more important not to have a great match. Just go out and kill somebody. Maybe not squash yeah, but nobody, them, but nobody cares about squashes though. They'll, 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 they'll complain about squashes and turn off their TVs now. I'm not saying do a squash. Okay. I'm saying you don't need to go 50-50 with well, if you, if Lance you, Archer. It, it, and it, I it like depends. Lance Archer. But I they think... don't do anything with Lance Archer. They do nothing with a guy. Yes. But for Brian Danielson to do a match which just physically dominates Lance Archer, that looks stupid. Well, don't put him that's, in with Lance Archer then. Okay, well, that that's a different argument. Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as, and the same thing with um, with Hobbs. I mean, if he went out there and just dominated Hobbs, it's like, okay, that's it for Hobbs. You know what I mean? I mean, well, Hobbs the same needed, point. doesn't need Hobbs. to be Hobbs. Yes, I know. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. But if it is, I thought that, that those matches were the matches that you should do. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a big deal on, like, you know, at the, at the end, 
at the end it's about getting excitement and if you if the guy gets his hand raised that's fine because it's like every every big star that i saw that that was noted as a worker you know historically whether it's rick flair or terry funk or ray stevens or whatever the whole thing was is that their gimmick was is that the other guy when you know takes most of the match and he, and the idea is is you make the other guy look like a killer and then you come and beat him so you've beaten somebody as opposed to beating nobody and um that's the whole thing i mean like yeah you could put him in there with whatever but i i you know there's nothing wrong with selling and having a good match and dominating someone you know it, it's with what they're going for you know, it's not like they're going, it's Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and you're going for this thing. What they're going for is a match of the two best workers. And once you're talking about the two best workers, the only way they get over is being good workers, you know, and, and having, the, the key is, is they're selling a great match. If they're selling domination or something like that, it's a completely different thing. This is about, have, you know, the two guys who have the great matches so the only way to get that over is to have great matches. And granted, it doesn't have to be with bigger guys and they sell so much, but it still has to be, if they go in there and they have a flat match and they win, that actually takes the edge off. I don't know this guy's supposed to be I'm, great I'm match. pretty sure that Brian Danielson and uh, Will Ospreay are not going to go in and have a flat match, well, regardless yeah. of what they do. Yeah, but they had the best match that they could have with the people that they were in with. I mean, yeah, you could go in there. I think that the mentality was is they both beat Shibata, the great, uh, you know, great wrestler in a different way. So now they had to each beat a monster, a new dynamic. And it was a new dynamic, not so much for Danielson, but for Osprey, completely new kind of match. He's never had a match like this in AEW. And he rarely, I mean, he did have, you know, some matches like that in Japan, but people here haven't seen it. So it was just something new. I mean, you know, so it's not the same Will Osprey match that you always have. And, um, you know, um, I think that they were just looking for something for, you know, if, if, if Will Ospreay is going to go in there with a big, strong guy like that, then Brian Danielson has to outdo him and do the same thing. But so. my point is he didn't. He barely beat Lance Archer. That's, that's my point. And the thing is, if you go watch a, go watch a Moxley match where he goes in with somebody who you know he's going to beat, he will still sell his ass off for that guy. Yeah. But he'll also decisively beat him. There's no question who the well, better Brian man Daniel, is after Brian, he gets the Brian, win. Brian Danielson won decisively. He I hit mean, his beat finish him the, and only got the guy to his knees and had and then he hit his hit second again. one. And then he did it again. So he yes. decisively beat him. Yeah. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows.